everyone and welcome to EDAP 688, Designing Technology Integrated Curriculum. Uh, this is a very busy, short-lived class that will introduce you to very specific ideas around technology that is integrated into your curriculum. Now, when I say integrated into your curriculum, I don't mean you're going to go back to school and find this. What we're going to be talking about here is the frameworks, the theoretical frameworks that allow us to look at technology that is truly integrated into how we teach. Your Blackboard site is ready for you. Your syllabus is ready for you, and your live text is ready for you. If you are taking this class through the distance ed, please realize that the 68850, which is normally the distance ed um, notation, we merge both of those classes together to make one class that is here in the 68830. Let's take a quick look at the course modules. Like I said, this is a very quick class, but it is a very heavy duty class. The first thing you need to look at up here is this is where you will do your presentation. You will sign up for it. Um, your presentations will be done as a part of your final. In other words, you come in, you sit down in my office, and you basically show me the coolness that you have created in your mini unit. Your mini unit will only be five lessons long. It will be based upon the uh, short lesson plan of the understanding by design. Um, and we will, of course, go into all of that. The first thing that we will do is we will be looking at something called TPAC, Technology, Pedagogy, Content Knowledge, SAMR, Substitute, you know what? I'm not going to read all these acronyms to you. I'm going to teach you all these acronyms. S SAMR and CAM. These all are very much a part of the framework for understanding how technology can be truly integrated. Uh, TPAC is the interplay. Uh, SAMR is kind of new. It's basically, so is the technology you're using, is it a substitution, augmentation, modification, or redefinition? We'll go through all that. The CAM part is Cognitive Apprenticeship Modeling, and what it is about is it is sort of the touchy-feely aspect of how we go about using technology in a way that actually engages kids as opposed to the let's turn on the projector and show a website kind of interesting stuff here we're going to be building an infographic using PictoChart where you basically try to figure out how all this stuff works together don't worry we'll have lots of examples then we're going to uh, create a um, we're going to actually look at a TPAC lesson, and we're going to do a um, analysis of it using a observation tool and a rubric. We're going to do all of that. Uh, the way it's set up is you click into the module, and then all the goodness is here inside. As you can see, each one of the sections has its own little folder, and inside each one of these is the videos that help you understand the PowerPoints that I'll be using. Yes, we've got to do some sit and get. I apologize for that right up front. Um, this is our wiki that we'll be using. Um, here is the presentation uh, that the guys who created TPAC. Uh, down here are some serious articles that we have to read. Um, one of the most important ones is this one right here. Now, this is not easy reading. This is not light bedtime reading. This is heavy duty stuff. So we'll be taking the time to do this. Um, I'm not going to go kill trees. I'm not going to run all copies of these. Uh, we've got to sit and read and talk about what we're reading. That's one. That's just one. Um, also in one is 
the SAMR, which is a little bit simpler to do, frankly. I mean, it's it's there's there's this is uh, something you probably have had it thrown at you at school already. This is this is not uh, heavy stuff, not like TPAC. So SAMR is very easy to understand, and then the final one, CAM, uh, is something you know you just don't know you know, and it's called. Um, probably one of those cognitive apprenticeship modeling. Um, this is John Abbott. If you don't know who John Abbott is, shame on you, because he's been thrown at you if you've been in courses with me. Uh, he basically is the guy that explains just about every kind of educational theory there is, mainly because he wrote most of them. Um, but here's the cognitive apprenticeship model. It's, uh, again, something for us to read here. Uh, again, it's not as difficult as uh, TPAC makes a lot of sense to me, frankly. Okay, then here's our pick to chart, which we'll be using. Now, one of the things that I want us to do while we're in these modules each day is take the time to play. P-L-A-Y, play. And I've gone ahead and I'm putting stuff in for us to play with. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because, first of all, I want you to see cool stuff. But second, I want you to be start seeing things that you could use in your mini unit that you have to build, which would be made up of five lessons. That mini unit gets started when we do module two. Well, by the way, there's some Easter eggs hidden on these module pages, and I'll leave it up to you to find those. What's an Easter egg? Well, ask me. The second module we're going to do is understanding by design. Here we go. This is the heavy stuff. Understanding by design. Why does Steve focus on this? Well, first of all, the two guys who uh, created understanding by design, Wiggins and McTeague, are actually two guys I know. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to do with this is basically really get you to understand um, what this is about. We will actually sit and watch videos and you know and I'm not a big believer in that sort of thing but I think we have to let Grant explain this to us so that we can really get our heads around it. If we don't then we miss something really important. Really important. And because this really forms the, the meat, in other words this is going to be the format that you're going to use. I will show you that format here in just a second. Um, then you need to understand what Wiggins and McTeague are all about. Here's the other piece. The understanding by design is embedded in Pages. They took a lot of their stuff from these two guys. Um, and this one page UBD template you're going to see it everywhere. It's going to be in this module. You're going to practice making one. And then you are more than welcome um, to use that as a way to kind of know what you can be one of the five lessons in your unit. I'd be very pleased with that. And then, for fun, I've thrown in something called Beginning Our Journey. And I'm going to ask you to design an introduction to your unit. And you may use, if you are of the sort, who is very creative and loves uh, to play and create cool stuff, then we're going to use GoAnimate. What I will insist on, and you'll, we will walk through all this, this can't be using a template. I'm going to make you stretch a little bit and actually go out and create a movie using your own resources. In other words, we can find um, images, we can find uh, pictures, we can find screenshots, uh, and that becomes the part of your GoAnimate introduction. If you are of the uh, linear sequential persuasion, you'll love blend space. Because in blend space, you basically can lay it out and go, here's what we're doing first, here's what we're doing second, here's what we're doing third. So, now, if you're going to sit and start asking me about, well, how long do these need to be, I'm going to stretch, I'm going to stress, I should say, the word intro beginning. So you're basically going to follow what you're being taught about UBD. 
You can't start the journey unless you know where you're going. And that's what these guys are trying to get us to start thinking about. If we don't have a clue about where we're going, and all we're doing is just following along the curriculum or following along the textbook, then the kids will be like, well, then why am I doing this? Okay, so that's what we're going to do with that module. All right, then our last module um, is the one that, frankly, um, I'm going to give a wave and a pass, not wave and a pass, but a wave at, and that's our PJA system. And what I want to do with this is I want to make sure that we see how technology integration does fit inside the PJA's modules, or the PJA's domains. So we need to take a look at that. Okay? Um, that one's not hard. <laughs> it doesn't take you long to figure that one out. Uh, there is reading here we have to do with the UBD. We don't just sit and watch Grant and, and um, um, McTeague sit here and talk to us, Wiggins and McTeague. We're, we do have to read some stuff. And one of the things I want you to understand about it is there's these different types of roles that Wiggins and McTeague see as, as teacher. Um, it's good stuff. I, I really like understanding by design. Um, finally, this is where, and by this time, I would, here's, here's how I see us. Wednesday, TPAC Summer Camp. Thursday, UBD. Friday, Peaches. Um, and then Monday, Tuesday of the following week is, let's just play. Let's look at all these different pedagogies, or different Web 2.0 tools, and how they could fit into what we want to do with our instruction. I'm going to help you look for stuff, but I also want you uh, to help us look for stuff. And some of these that I've got here are just extraordinary. I, I, I could go on and on and on about those, but we're not going to. So that would be the Monday, Tuesday, the following week. In other words, we're going to sit and play, seriously play, with a lot of these resources. Um, this particular uh, folder um, goes into what is Web 2.0, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I have some new tools um, up my sleeve that I will throw at you. Um, this is, in other words, this is a very organic uh, module. It'll grow as I sit down with it tomorrow and as we sit down with it on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So the following Monday and Tuesday, that becomes a we share, we find cool stuff, and then Tuesday is your day to sit and put all this together into the unit. Wednesday and Thursday and Friday of the following week is for you to make an appointment to come in and sit and show it to me. And explain to me how it all works, etc. And we're done. Okay. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. Oh, last thing to show you especially those of you who are Collaborate. Uh, they'll be coming in through the Collaborate session. Collaborate is all set up and ready to go. Um, as you can see, here's the link to the, uh, the uh, room. Please realize that you have to, first time you ever do this, you have to download what they call the Blackboard Collaborate Launcher. Uh, this is a Java-based application. I don't care if you're on a Mac or if you're on a PC. So, you must try getting into this room. I'm going to go ahead and click on mine. As you can see, hey, get the launcher. Do you already have the launcher? Well, then you see what I'm showing you. If you have never been in the Collaborate, it's going to ask you to download the launcher, and you must then download that launcher to be able to get into here. Um, it's called uh, uh, Join Collab, I think, um, and uh, on the PC and on the Mac side, as I said, your Java must be up to date. Or if you have issues, and this is why you need to go in and look at it right away, um, we can help you with that. In fact, I'm going to include in this uh, email the instructions for the various uh, security settings for Java and browser settings that can interfere with those of you who are taking the class from the great beyond. That's what we call you who are in distance ed. Those of you who are taking the class from the great beyond, 
um, need to understand some of the issues that you'll bump, be bumping into. Now, I have tried very hard uh, to clean up all of the media problems that we have uh, with Blackboard, and I think we're in pretty good shape there. As you can see, I just jumped through the hoops of starting up Collaborate. You'll notice there was this one thing that said, hey, you're using a Java application. Are you sure you want to do this? And I would click Run. And so what it's doing now is I've done all that, and as you can see, it finally has gotten around to launching Blackboard Collaborate. I hope you're noticing how long this video is taking me because I'm waiting for all this to come in. Now, the first thing that we're going, I want you to do is when you come in, turn on your talk button so I can hear you. If you have questions, you do not need to turn on video. Please, goodness gracious, don't turn on your video. It'll just crash the system. As you can see down here, there's a little chat window. If you need to say something and you don't necessarily want to be heard in the room, by all means, use the chat window. But I'm telling you that talking works the best because we have it all set up in the classroom. We'll be in 201G for those of you who will be actually coming to class. You know 201G, it's the one with the glass walls. I call it the fishbowl. It's a huge classroom and there'll be four of us. So yeah, that's just the way it's gonna be. Anyway, for those of you from the great beyond, this is how you're going to get in. And I will, as I said, I will send you a uh, couple of handouts that go along with using Collaborate. Okay? All right. I'm going to turn that off. Oh, every day when we're finished, I film the class. And there'll be a lot of filming here because, as I said, unfortunately, we do have to do a lot of sit and get, uh, or I show you things and PowerPoints, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, as I said, I will apologize for that right away. Um, but what I'm trying to get at here is I'm trying to get you to realize that um, if you are in the great beyond, you can watch these videos and they will be kept right here where it says collaborate recordings um, each day. It takes about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to encode two to three hours worth of class recording. So I will make you a promise that I will get those turned over as fast as I can so that you can get to them. I know we have a very short class uh, span here. The other thing to make you aware of, um, and this is why it's really important, if you're in the Collaborate, in the Great Beyond, every day, if I see your name on that list, I'm going to say something to you like, hello, can you hear me, obviously. And then you're going to talk back to me to make sure I can hear you. But more importantly, you're going to let me know that you can see the screen that I'm sharing. We had in this last class, in my 580 class, we had times where the screen wasn't being shared. But I thought it was. But since nobody out in the great beyond basically said to me, hey, I can't see what you're talking about, I just kept right on going. So it's going to be, it's going to, I need you to be good citizens of the great beyond and let me know when things are working and not working. Okay, that's it. I will see you uh, Wednesday morning at 9. It's even in the U link is 9. I've already been asked if it's going to be 8 o'clock. No, no, it's, it's 9. And we will work each day until we are finished. So I look forward to seeing you.